Imagine yourself waking up having a bronze dragon task from Konar. When you complete this, you go from like 70 slayer points all the way up to 380. That's where I'm at right now. Welcome to another group Iron Man video. Two things I quickly want to show off. Doug is doing Solcano and he is giving me most of the steel bars so in my downtime I can make cannonballs which is going to be of course very nice for Slayer. Also Dovidas has got the Ancient Ceremonial legs. I showed that off in the last video but I did not get to put them on. And if I take them out I can actually do this. Ceremonial. I have the top as well and the gloves. Oh there they are. So uh, let's uh, whoops on the note the chest. Take it out and equip this and see how it looks. Yeah, that looks really good. I think it's such a cool looking set. The helmet is actually really cool as well. So if I do get spiritual creature tasks, I will always try to do them until we have the full set just because I think it looks so good. That is the task we're looking for, 221 Necreals and I'm going to get 81 Slayer on this task as well. The Greater Necreals actually have zero magic defense, so I was thinking about skipping the Arims because it doesn't really give any magic damage anyways, just accuracy, and go with the Ancient Ceremonial items because this just looks so good. And on top of that, it is like Monk Robes, as I've said that multiple times at this point, but uh, plus 5 prayer on the bottoms and plus 6 for the chest, and that should actually help me stay here quite a bit longer. I'm a bit worried that the minions might be shredding me if I don't have the Arims on because they kind of hit through prayer or they hit with like ranged when you have to pray melee. So uh, we will have to see, it's an interesting test. Honestly, I would say that this is a lot better. I am doing basically the same damage. You can see the XP drops are very nice and my health is not really going down much at all. I can really just blood burst all my HP back. So I'm going to be using this for the future. There it is, 81 Slayer in the chat. Only six more levels to go until Kraken. 90 magic as well. Pretty nice milestone, if I get 4 more I can just uh, barrage without boosting with Imbued Heart. Now after that I got 187 blood welds and that is a very long task but a good task to do but it can be sped up quite a bit if you have a cannon in the Dark Mayor dungeon where it's actually multi and you can use a cannon. So what I'm going to do now is uh, smith 1600 steel bars into cannonballs. It's going to be many hours but it's kinda chill and afk so shouldn't be that bad. And that is all the bars done, let's see, 6.4k cannonballs nearly, that is actually going to last quite a while. I decided to use some of the granite dust I got from my 100 kills of the grotesque guardians on the cannonballs, I actually already used some of the cannonballs, but uh, 4.8k granite cannonballs, what this does, it increases the max hit of a cannonball from 30 to 35, and that is an overall DPS increase of 16.67%. So it's going to uh, get me some more value out of these cannonballs. I actually forgot to record it, but I had 93 ranged like two tasks ago, but this level I am not going to miss. 92 hit points, that is the halfway point experience wise to 99, so pretty nice. I think my first, uh, or actually second 99, I forgot I even had fire making, but second 99 is probably going to be ranged, and then the third one uh, hopefully hit points. I completely missed that. I have been so autopiloting Slayer, but that is 82 Slayer. We need five more levels. And actually in three more levels at 85, I can do some Abyssal Sire if I get that as a task. So that's going to be very nice. Now I've been doing a lot of Slayer. I've gained so many levels in the past days and I actually want to take a bit of a break and I want to do something pretty interesting, which is on the Hard Combat Diary. I actually want to complete, if we can find it here, one theater of blood run and you can actually do this as a group but i want to do it solo it is this one complete the theater of blood entry mode one time it's called entry mode because it is a part of the uh, night at the theater quest which is a way easier version of the theater of blood but i think it's it's possibly decently hard to solo i've never done it before so it's going to be interesting to try definitely for sure so uh, let's see how we do before we get into the Theater of Blood run, I have to do this Hispori kill. It is a part of the quest and it is in the middle of Mauritania. It's kind of a weird feeling, but I guess I literally just do the same as in the Farming Guild. I just hit these and I think I should be fine with ranged. Easy enough, that should be the kill. And now it is pretty much just teleport to the Theater of Blood after I cut here. I think I get some bark or something. If the ghost doesn't interrupt me, there we go. I got Hispori bark. And now it is back to the Theater of Blood, and let's do this. No idea how hard this is going to be, but uh, I'm bringing a lot of hybrid items, I have less switches, this is going to be my inventory, and uh, yeah, let's just send it and see how it goes. 
Okay, well, so far I have done this boss before. I've done a full run before, and this is ridiculously easy. I mean, this is just the first boss, but it is meant to be soloed in a quest. So, of course, it's going to be quite a lot easier, but look at this. I'm going to uh, burst this minion, and it should literally just die from, like, one hit. Yeah, that is a lot easier, at least in the beginning here. It's already half HP as well. You can see, in the normal mode, I think it has, like, thousands of HP. Yeah, quite a difference here. The last 1%, there we go, that should be the last hit, and that's the first boss completed. The bloat is going to be, of course, extremely easy, but I will have to do it in a couple of runs, I guess. I can't uh, DPS it down in one go with my gear. Oh, that's not good, and it turns around, okay, so it's still kind of the same mechanics, I guess, as in the normal mode. It's just uh, very low damage on everything. Probably should have brought stamina now that I think about it, because here I ran out of run speed, but uh, should be getting the kill here. Oh, please do not splash again. Please! Oh no, this is so bad. There's no way he's not dead. Yeah, there we go. That is the bloat completed. Now over to Nylocast. This is going to be pretty interesting how you do the solo. So, Nylocast, what is this boss like? Well, it is going to spawn, as you can see right now from different corners, white, blue, and green spiders. You have to kill them with the respective style. So the green ones you have to kill with ranged, the white one you have to kill with melee, and the blue ones you have to kill with magic. There's also going to be some bigger ones you will see in a bit. There is a blue one. You kill that with magic, and it is going to spread out to small ones. And the more spiders you kill, the lower the HP is going to be at the top of the screen. You have to get that to 20%, and as you can see, the pillars are getting attacked by the spiders. If a pillar breaks, you take, like, 25 damage or something like that, so it's not the end of the world. I guess the only way you would really fail this is if all the pillars go down. But in the entry mode, that is not that hard, but the spiders also attack you, so you take some damage, your food is going to get drained, and the better you are being tick perfect on attacking a spider every single time, the less spiders there's going to be, so a win-win. And when all the minions are dealt with, the boss spawns and it works exactly the same way. So when it's white, you have to actually hit it with melee, when it's green, ranged, and blue magic. But you also have to protect the same thing. So if you're going to hit it with melee, you want to protect melee. And if it's ranged, you protect ranged, and so on. And you do this all the way to the end. Usually you get two hits in with a style, and then you have to swap again. So you can do two hits, get ready for the swap, and then just uh, deal with that. And there it is. That is the boss done. That feels like probably the most annoying one. Maybe the last one is going to be a bit more annoying. But yeah, Nylocas is quite annoying even in the entry mode. Well, two Sara Brews and I can't get any more food. I have to kill Soda's Egg before I can actually buy more food. So this is going to be interesting. Here we go. This is the maze. Of course, if you're in a team, you have to do this a bit differently. Now I can just uh, basically run through the whole thing. And it should be fine. I'm not really sure how you would do it in the correct way. I know you can like skip click somehow, but I'm just going to be safe now. I don't have to rush it. Very easy. I actually thought this would be a lot harder than it was, but that is one more hit. And Soda Seg is dead. Yeah, now I can buy some more supplies. Hopefully it's going to be enough for uh, the other bosses. I think you only actually get these band-aids, which he like 16 or something. I'm not 100% sure. Let's go up here and see what it looks like. Search the chest. And uh, yeah, it's just band-aids, but I can get 10 of them, which is probably not that bad. Sarpus is definitely one of the bosses I am the least familiar with, and I think ranging it is going to be the best thing to do before it goes to lower HP. I'm not really sure how it works, I know you have to like spread out the poison, and then in the last phase, if he looks at you, meanwhile you hit him, you're going to basically just one-shot yourself. I'm assuming that in the uh, entry mode, it is going to be vastly less damage than like 99 I can actually take a hit, I guess, and see how much damage I'm going to take, but uh, otherwise, in normal mode, it would be like a one-shot. Alright, so let's see if I do take a hit from Sarpus now. I'm just going to stand here and attack, and let's see how much damage I'm going to take when he looks at me. Maybe he's not even going to look at me, maybe I'm going to be very lucky, but uh, hopefully I only get hit for like a maximum of 40 damage. I think I got hit 15 by a one- okay, let's see how much damage am I going to take. 31 so yeah that would be like a one shot if you're doing normal mode but uh, definitely not in the entry mode but uh, that is Sarpus dead let's now go to Versic Vitter 
Very interesting to see how this is going to go. I really have no idea if I will be able to do this. And I don't even know what happens if you die. If you have to redo the entire thing or if I only have to redo a bitter. I feel like this is going to be an absolute disaster. Of course it's going to be easy mode, but I really don't know most of the mechanics of this boss. I know that the Dawnbringer in the beginning here is very important. I wonder how it's going to work in the entry mode because... Usually you actually have to trade this off to people and it can hit massive amounts and let's see if the spec bar is even going to be enough. I guess it's going to be enough. Or do I have to wait for one more? Oh no, I have to just wait it out for another spec? Interesting. Of course normally now you would be running in between the attacks and hitting the boss to do more damage but I don't know if I have to do that if I'm doing solo. Maybe that's even going to be enough. Oh my god, that is so close. I guess I can run in now, man mode. Get it done. Oh, I think I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Nice. What? I got an elite combat task. You can actually do that in here. That is very strange that they allow you to do it in entry mode. But uh, hey, nice, I guess. What am I doing? I don't even have spec. Well, I'm definitely doing something wrong because I can't kill the boss. It's just getting healed by this minion all the time. I don't have the DPS actually to kill it. And this minion just takes zero damage. I killed one of them. It just respawned another one. So... Yeah, I'm kind of out of food here and not sure what to do, but it seems like I am just going to have to redo everything. Guess I'm dying here. Let's see what happens if I die. I am going to... I guess I'm going to just get teleported out and I have to redo everything, so... Let's see what actually happens. I am dead, and I am going to go into the prison, and then the run should be ending right here. Oh, so I'm still in the room, but I don't have any food, so what do I do? I figured out you actually have to have a poison weapon or a serpentine helmet to kill those healers. So I have that now reset everything and look at that. I actually got an elite combat task from the first boss as well. And right before Vitter we get another elite combat task. Don't look at me. Nice to get this out of the way now anyways. If I will go for the elite diaries in the future. But uh, looking quite a bit better on the inventory now. And the healers should be... No problem anymore with the uh, Serpentine Helmet, so let's see how this goes. So much better this time, and uh, I think I should be able to do it. Look at my supplies, I still have a lot of things. I don't really know what is going on in this phase, I'm going to be honest with you, but the damage I'm taking is kind of minor anyway, so I don't think it matters that much if I screw up. But uh, I just know the nets you have to run away from, so it seems to be fine. Oh my god, are you kidding me? I died literally on the absolute end of it to the mechanic where there's like a yellow thing you have to stand in and the tornado landed on me at the same time. Oh well, I do have enough supplies anyways for another attempt. It's going to suck if I have to do the whole thing again, but I think I have it down now. Oh my god, this is just so bad. What world am I on? I feel like my ping is just insane. I cannot run back and forth on Vitter without just tanking so much damage. I'm clicking and it's like one second delay. Look at that delay! Oh my god, I should have probably checked that out before I entered. That is so bad after we do everything. Smile. Oh, something I didn't really consider was just ranging it. I saw every guide basically meleeing, but yeah, in the entry mode you definitely can range this. I'm not sure how it works in the normal mode, but uh, this is going to make it a lot easier. I had to redo everything. I kind of just scrapped using magic gear overall. I didn't really need it. And I brought as much food as possible if I would screw up here. But uh, seems very easy with range now. So should be good. Oh my god. Please. How much damage am I going to take for this? 45. Okay, that's how I died last time with a combo of the beam. But yeah, that is now the boss dead. And that is finally the night <laughs> at the theater done. That was a lot harder than I expected it to be. Also, the task, of course, the hard one, which I had to complete, the reason why I did this. I mean, it is very easy if you know what you're doing, but if you have basically never done this, it is definitely a learning experience. And if you're doing this yourself and you've never done it before, I would recommend something like this. Just a lot of food and, like, barely any switches. And range the final boss, because meleeing it is a lot harder. And the loot is going to be... Four battle staves and one palm tree I actually didn't even expect to get any loot, so I, I guess that's not that bad. Wait, did I even bank it? And there it is. It is completed. Three antique lamps that can only be used on combat skills, I'm pretty sure. So what should we take? I guess I'll just put them all into ranged. It is the most useful skill anyways. 20,000 is all of these 20k, so that's literally 60k range experience. That's uh, not bad. I'll definitely take that. 
But it's back to Slayer and I got 250 Necreals, the dream task, but I have no money right now and I have no runes to actually do bursting, so I'm going to take out all of this now that I'm on the normal spellbook. And I'm going to alk everything, try to restock on some runes, and then go back to Ancients and do the task. Not bad, almost 4.3 million, so I'm going to try to get 16k death runes and 16k chaos runes, that's uh, the maximum amount you can have in your rune pouch, and then I won't have to restock for quite a while, but I don't know if this is going to be enough, I guess we'll see. Oh my god, I feel like this is the video of missing levels, but uh, I did hit 91 on bursting this task, so that is pretty nice. I mean, only three more levels and I don't have to boost anymore for the Ice Barrage spell. That is going to be extremely beneficial for Theater of Blood in the future, especially for the first boss. Oh my god, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. 238 Necreals again, almost back to back actually. And uh, it looks like we're going to get 83 Slayer for this video, which is a nice milestone to reach. Last Necreal task I did, I got zero superiors in 300 kills with the Bracelets of Slaughter. Hopefully we get like 6 this time to make up for that. There it is, that's what I wanna see. Please give me a lot of these during the task. Thank you, Mr. Necreog, for the imbued heart. Yeah. This is the third superior on this task, so getting a lot of superiors this time, which is very nice to see. Only halfway with the task as well, and we get some blood runes and totem base. 133 Calphites, and I'm going to hit 83 Slayer on that task. And because it is Calphites, I do actually want to try to do like one or two kills on the Calphite Queen. I will have to do 50 kills for the Hard Diaries to complete it in the future anyways, and I would like to gauge how hard the boss is to solo with my bow Faradina and probably like a whip or something. I guess we'll see how it goes. Now that I think about it, I think this setup is definitely not what I should have went for. I should have probably went for like tanky setup with a BGS main handing and just flinch it. I think uh, tanking the damage is pretty rough on Calphite Queen because she does so high damage even though she is a very old boss. You can see the damage I'm already taking now, so yeah, this is quite the challenge. I've never really done much of this boss, I haven't learned the flinching methods and all those, which would be the best bet of getting the 50kc for the diary if I was a normal Iron Man. But because I am a group Iron Man, I think in the future I'm going to come back here and actually do this with a group and just get the 50kc that way, because doing this as solo is just not very fun and I don't really feel like learning the whole new strategy. But at least I'm going to get one kill for the diary, I know- look at this damage! I had to teleport out because it was just slapping me. Look at this damage! It's such an entry-level boss as well, which is kind of funny. Like, it was released a long time ago, and it still slaps this hard, which is kind of interesting. But uh, that is the kill. 536 Slayer experience, and we get some rune knives. But that is also, as you can see, the hard desert diary done. So, nice to have that at least done for the future. But regardless, this is going to be 83 Slayer, which I did not miss this time, and this is actually a pretty big level because now I can kill Spiritual Mages, which is going to be a better creature to kill when I get Spiritual Creatures than the Rangers, which I'm killing in the Ancient Prison outside of Nex. So that's going to be pretty nice, they actually recently made them able to drop Dragon Boots, which was apparently something they just forgot about, I think. Or maybe they just patched in recently, but they can drop them now, so they are overall very profitable and good for Iron Man. Now before we end the video, I have a couple of important things to let you guys know. The first thing is that I'm going to be making Leagues content, and from now there is two days left until the Shattered Leagues is going to be released. I am going to go for a pretty interesting goal in that series, so I hope you guys will watch that and enjoy it. But during the meantime of me creating that content, I am still going to be playing my group Iron Man, but I'm probably not going to be posting any videos on it. I am going to be doing a lot of AFK activities, meanwhile working on the other account. And if we go into the bank, I now have 2200 steel bars and barely any cannonballs left. And Doug is actually doing a lot of Salcano, so I am going to get a bunch of steel bars from him. And one of the AFK activities is going to be make a lot of cannonballs for when I get back and I can focus on this account. I can blast out 87 Slayer right away. So that is basically what I'm going to be AFKing on this account. I might do some other things as well, like Nightmare Zone AFKing, Woodcutting, or anything that is decently AFK on this account. The second thing I want to say is that I am very close to 15,000 subscribers, so if you guys want to help me out on that, that would be greatly appreciated. Of course, only if you enjoy the content, but yeah, would be nice to get 15k. 
Now for the absolutely last thing I want to say. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. And until next time guys. Take care.